will say angle C D P is equals to angle A, which is about equal to angle X. And then now, based on that, we will say therefore A B D C is a cyclic quad. Is a cyclic quad. L of a cyclic quad is equals to opposite interior. Hello, hello, grade twelve. Welcome back to the channel Science Therapy. Hosted by the one and only science therapist, U Abu Dewa Sos, U Gobela Wemets. And without any further ado, let's look at these questions that we have here. Okay, so we have question nine. It says, complete the statement so that it is true. Angles subtended by a chord of a circle on the same side of a chord are equal, right? So they are equal, angles on the same segment are equal. Then, okay, 9.2 says in the diagram below, A, B, F, E, and E, F, D, C are cyclic quadrilateral in two equal circles that intersect at E and F. B, F, C, and A, E, C are straight lines. B, D is a common tangent to the circles at B and D respectively, where E, C is equals to C, D. Then let uh, C D P there be equals to X. So we've been we've been shown an uh, angle C D P. That's the X there. Then they say proof giving reasons that angle F one is equals to angle F two. Now this is how we can study this. So again, considering our doctor C P T, we are given the tangent, and then when it comes to a tangent, we must a uh, Think of the theorems, tan perpendicular to radius, but then we can see here we are not given any radius. Then the other theorem we can think of is tan chord, right? Now, if we can check here, we do have a chord, DC, and then we also have a tangent. We know that the angle between the chord and the tangent must be equal to the angle in the alternate segment. How do you find the angle in the alternate segment? By holding the chord DC, and then weight subtends the angle there, then that's the angle on the alternate segment. So in other words, we can start this question by saying angle F1, or let's just indicate like this. Let's say angle CDP must be equal to angle F1, which is equals to angle X. And then this is based on what? Tan chord theorem. Right. But then there's also another uh, theorem on chords, which says if we have equal chords, then they will subtend equal angles. Note that we are given that EC is equal to CD. Now EC here subtends an angle, which is a angle F2, but then also CD subtends an angle, which is angle F1. Now these chords are equal, and then they subtend angles, which means these angles must be of equal size so if this one is x then also that one is x therefore in conclusion we can say therefore f1 is equals to f2 right and the reason for that so they're both equals to x the reason for that is because equal chords equal chords subtend equal angles right and then you can also show that it's because ec is equals to cd Right. So it's a low key theorem, but then you have to put it in your in the back of your mind that uh, there is such a theorem. Right. Then 9.2.2 uh, prove that ABDC is a cyclic quadrilateral. So what I like to do is uh, I like to mark that a uh, cyclic quadrilateral that they're talking about or that quad because now it's not a cyclic quadrilateral before we prove it. So innocent until proven guilty. Then there we go. So, okay, now 9.2.2 says we must prove that A, B, D, C is a cyclic quadrilateral. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you know that there are three ways in which we prove a cyclic quad. It's number one, you can either prove that the angles on the same segment will be equal or number two, you can prove that uh, opposite interior angles of that quad will be equal to 180 degrees. So this would make it a cyclic quad. Or number three, you can prove that an exterior angle of that quad 
will be equal to the opposite interior angle, right? So now it's a matter of finding out which one to prove with. Now, okay, starting with this one, remember we are already given that A, B, F, E is a cyclic quad, right? And then if we were to look at that based on angle F2 here, so if we were to look at this one here, the cyclic quad, we can see that F2 here now becomes an exterior angle of this cyclic quad. So in other words, we can say angle F2 is equals to angle A, which should also be equals to uh, X because angle F2 is X. So this is based on what? Exterior angle of cyclic quad. Right. And then from here, if we have this, let's indicate we have X. But then remember, we said we can prove with any of this. Looking at this uh, quad here, A, B, D, C, look at this X here. This is an exterior angle of all this red quad here. And then if we can prove that this exterior angle is equal to the opposite interior angle, then we have proven that this is a cyclic quad, which already we can see that we have an X here and we also have an X there, which suggests that angle C, D, P is equal to angle A, which is an exterior angle of that. So how do we write that? We will say angle C, D, P is equal to angle A, which is about equal to angle X. And then now, based on that, we will say, therefore, A, B, D, C is a cyclic quad. Is a cyclic quad. But then what's the reason for that? We used the converse of the theorem that says exterior angle of a cyclic quad is equals to opposite interior angle. Now, why do we say converse? It's because remember, it is not a cyclic quad yet. So we are trying to prove that. So we are saying, we are simply saying that if we can find that the exterior angle of this quad is equal to the interior angle, opposite interior angle of this quad there, uh, that means that this can be a cyclic quad. This is a cyclic quad. So this is converse theorem of that to say that uh, we know that the reverse or the converse of that is to just prove that this exterior is equal to opposite interior angle then we can conclude that it is a cyclic quad okay so that's how you were supposed to go about that one and then a nice uh, three marks there okay so let's uh, proceed to 9.2.3 it says a uh, Prove that BE is parallel to CD. Now, when it comes to proving parallel lines, all parallel lines uh, respond to FUN. So it's either we prove that the corresponding angles or co-interior angles or alternate angles. So essentially, if we can prove using one of this, then we can uh, conclude that these sides are parallel. So again, we want to go to those sides and highlight them. So BE must be parallel to what? To CD, right? Now they do look parallel, but then we can't just say uh, the reason is they look parallel. We need to prove that, right? So what are we going to do? If we can check here, B1 plus B2. So we say B1 plus B2 will be equals to angle A, right? And then looking at this, remember BD is a tangent. And then this is a chord BE, and then this is a, a tangent BD, and then this is an angle between that chord and the tangent, which must be equal to the angle in the alternate segment. But then while we were proving our cyclic quad up here, we did uh, find that this is X, right? So that means B1 plus B2 uh, is equals to A, and then they should both be equal to X, right? And then the reason for that is tan chord theorem, right? But then again, we did prove that angle C, D, P is equal to angle A. And then this was proven above. This is what we used to prove that this is a cyclic quad. So we can just write proven, right? And then now that we know that uh, this is X and then that is X 
and the whole of this is x. Look at this. Now I want you to pay attention here. Now check here. What shape do we see forming in between those angles here? Now you can see an F shape forming there. So these are corresponding angles. So we can then say, uh, therefore, angle B1 plus angle B2 is equal to angle C, D, P. And then, therefore, B, E is parallel to C, D. And the reason for that, it's because corresponding angles, corresponding angles are equal. So if we have corresponding angles equal, that means we can conclude that these lines here are parallel. Right, nice. So two marks for that. And then now let's go to 9.2.4. So it says FC, prove that FC is a diameter. Where is FC? So we want to prove that FC is a diameter. Let me erase everything here. Then let me highlight FC. So now, from Dr. CPT, we know that if we are given the diameter, the one uh, theorem that we have to remember is the one that says uh, angle subtended by the diameter is equal to 90 degrees or angles on a semicircle, right? So if a diameter were to subtend an angle at the circumference, then the angle would be 90 degrees. So if we hold the diameter FC, and then it were, it was to sub subtend an angle here, E1, it would be 90 degrees. The same FC, if it were to subtend an angle here at D, that D would be 90 degrees. So that means in other words, if we have to interpret the question, this means that we have to either prove that E1 is 90 degrees or prove that D is equal to 90 degrees. So either one of uh, this here would uh, win us the case. Okay, now they did say that if it is given that EBDC is a rhombus. So now they give us more information. So e, EBDC is a rhombus. Now if this is a rhombus, we know that uh, all the sides here must be equal. So all the sides in here must be equal. Right, and then also another thing that we know about a rhombus is that the diagonal here bisects the angles on the vertex. So meaning this angle is equal to that angle, this angle is equal to that angle, right? So that means we can approach that using uh, that fact. Okay, so let's start by saying F1 is equal to F2, which is equal to X. And then this is based on what? It, is, it was proven above, so from 9.2.1. Then, so these ones are equal, but then this here is a cyclic quad, as they did mention, EFDC is a cyclic quad. So this here is a cyclic quad. Now, if this is a cyclic quad, that means if this is X here and this is X, now what will be the whole of angle C? So angle C would have to be 180, minus 2x and the reason for that is opposite angles of a cyclic quad because what do we know if this is a cyclic quad the opposite interior angles must add up to 180 degrees so if this is 2x as a whole this must be 180 minus 2x right but c1 is equals to c2 Based on the fact that uh, we know, so this, if we divide this by two, that's 90 degrees minus X for each angle here. This is based on what? On the fact that we know the properties of a rhombus is that diagonals of rhombus bisect the angles. Right. Now, from that, we can look at triangle in triangle FDC, FDC. So let me mark triangle FDC so that we are all aware of what I'm talking about, right? So keep your eyes focused on angle FDC. Now, remember, we don't know that this is 90 degrees. We are trying to prove that it will be 90 degrees. 
Now, if you can check this, if I wanted angle D, then you would agree that I would have to say 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus X and then plus the X here. Right? So I'd have to say 180 minus all of these angles here. Then angle D would have to be negative X plus X is zero. So 180 minus 90, that's 90 degrees. But then if I have proven that D is 90 degrees, then that means FC is a diameter. So that means I can conclude FC is a diameter. Because remember, we said if we can prove that E1 is 90 or D is 90 degrees, then this is based on what? This is based on the fact that we have converse of the theorem that says angles or angle on a semicircle. Angle on a semicircle. So basically, this converse of the theorem says if we can prove that the angle here that was subtended by a line that runs from a, that runs from one point on the circumference to another point of, on the circumference is 90 degrees then that means that chord that we are that we are talking about must be a tangent because the only chord that can subtend an angle of 90 degrees on a semicircle is a diameter right so that's how you were supposed to go about answering that question for a whooping total of 14 marks. So please uh, adopt that strategy, Dr. CPT. It is very, very uh, useful when it comes to answering your Euclid and geometry questions. But then with all that being said, guys, please press the thumbs up button if you have enjoyed the lesson and then you found it helpful. And if you've been watching the videos and haven't subscribed yet, please, please, please hit the subscribe button. But most importantly, Please share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance. Remember, do not be selfish. We are winning as a team.